good wishes to all of you chapter 9 chalkolithic cultures from india's ancient past for upsc from rs sharma sir's book here we are hearing it on a audio format chalkolithic settlements the end of the neolithic period saw the use of metals the metal first used was copper and several cultures were based on the use of copper and stone implements such a culture is called chalcolithic which means the copper stone phase technologically the chalcolithic stage is applied to the pre harappan phase however in various parts of india the chalcolithic cultures followed the bronze age harappa culture were here we consider principally such cultures as came in the later part of the mature harappa culture or after its end the chalcolithic people mostly used stone and copper objects but they also occasionally used low grade bronze and even iron they were primarily rural communities spread over a wide area with hilly land and rivers on the other hand the harappans used bronze ha- bronze and had urbanized on the basis of the produce from the flood plains in the indus valley in india settlements relating to the chalcolithic phase are found in southeastern rajasthan the western part of mp western maharashtra and in southern and eastern india in southeastern rajasthan two sites one at ahar and the other at gilan have been excavated they lie in the dry zones of the banas valley in western mp or malwa khayata and iran have been excavated malwa were characters characteristics of the malwa chalcolithic culture of central and western india is considered the richest among chalcolithic ceramics and some of this pottery and other related cultural elements also appear in maharashtra however the most extensive excavations have taken place in western maharashtra several chalcolithic sites such as jor nevasa daimabad in ahmednagar district chandoli songhan and inamagon in pune district and also prakash and nasik have been excavated they all relate to the jor culture and named after jor the type site situated on the left bank of the pravada river a tributary of the godavari in ahmednagar district the jor culture over much to the malwa culture but it also shared elements of the neolithic culture of the south the jor culture 1400 to 1700 bc covered modern maharashtra except parts of vidarbha and the coastal region of konkan although the jor culture was rural some of its settlements such as daimabad and in amagon had almost reached the urban stage all these maharashtra sites were located in semi arid areas mostly on brown black soil which had bare and bubble vegetation but fell in the riverine tracts in addition to these we have navratholi situated on the narmada most chalcolithic ingredients intruded into the neolithic sites in south india Several chalcolithic sites have been found in the Vindhyan region of Allahabad district in eastern India besides Chiran down the Ganges mentioned may may be made of um, Pandu Raza Dibi in Burdwan district and Mahishdhal in Birbhum district in West Bengal some additional sites have been excavated notable among which are Senyor Sonpur and Tarthil in Bihar and Kairadhil and Narhan in eastern UP The Chalcolithic people used tiny tools and weapons made of stone in which the stone blades and bladelets were an important element in many places particularly in south india the stone blade industry flourished and stone axes continued to be used obviously such areas were not situated far from the hills Certain settlements show a large number of copper objects. This seems to be the case with Ahar and Gilan, which were situated more or less in the dry zones of the Banas Valley in Rajasthan. Unlike the other contemporary chalcolithic farming cultures, Ahar virtually used 
no microlith tools stone axes or blades are virtually absent here objects relating to it include several flat axes bangles several sheets all made of copper although there is also a bronze sheet copper was locally available the people of ahar practiced smelting and metallurgy from the very outset and the original name of ahar is tambavati or a place that has copper the ahar culture is dated to between 2100 and 1500 bc and gilon is considered a regional center of it gilon shows only fragments of copper but it had a stone blade industry flat rectangular copper axes have been found in jorban chandoli in maharashtra and copper chisels in chandoli the people of the chalcolithic phase used different types of pottery one of which is called black and red and seems to have been widely prevalent from nearly 2000 bc onwards here i show you as a chalcolithic cultures map here it is a map of chalcolithic cultures you can see here it was thrown on wheel and occasionally painted with white liner designs this is true not only of settlements in rajasthan mp and maharashtra but also of habitations found in bihar and west bengal people living in maharashtra mp and bihar produced chanel spotted pots dishes on sand and bowls on stand it would be wrong wrong to think that all the people who use a black and red pottery were of the same culture black and red were pottery from maharashtra mp and rajasthan was painted but there were very few such painted pots in eastern india the people living in the chalcolithic is in southeastern rajasthan western mp western maharashtra and elsewhere domesticated animals and practiced agriculture they reared cows sheep goats pigs and buffaloes and hunted deer camel remains have also been found but generally they were not acquainted with the horse some animal remains are identified as being either of the horse donkey or wild ass people certainly ate beef and pork but they did not eat pork on any considerable scale what is remarkable is that these people produced wheat and rice and in addition to these staple crops they also cultivated bajra they produced several pulses such as lentil masoor black gram green gram and grass pea almost all these food grains have been found at navratoli situated on the bank of the narmada in maharashtra perhaps at no other place in india has so many cereals been discovered as a result of excavation the people of navratoli toli sorry navratoli also produced bear and linseed cotton was produced in the black cotton soil of the deccan and rye bajra and several millets were cultivated in the lower deccan in eastern india fish hooks have been found in bihar and west bengal where we also find rice this suggests that the chalcolithic people in the eastern region lived on fish and rice which is still a popular diet in that part of the country most settlements in the banas valley in rajasthan are small but ahar and gilan spread over an area of nearly 4 hectares the chalcolithic people were generally not acquainted with the burnt bricks which was seldom used as in gilan around 1500 bc occasionally their houses were made of mud bricks but mostly these were constructed with wattle and daub and seem to have been thatched houses however the people in ahar lived in stone tools stone houses of the 200 jord sites discovered so far the largest is daimabad in the godavari valley it is about 20 hectares in extent which could have accommodated around 4000 people it also seems to have been fortified with a mud wall which had stone rubble 
bastions daimabad is famous for the recovery of many bronze goods some of which were influenced by the harappan culture at namagon in the earlier chalcolithic phase in western maharashtra large mud houses with ovens and circular pit houses have been discovered in the later phase 1300 to 1000 bc we have a house with five rooms four rectangular and one circular this was located at the center of the settlements and may have been the house of a chief the granary located close to it may have been used for storing tributes in kind enamagon was a large chalcolithic settlement with over 100 houses and numerous grave sites it was fortified and surrounded by a moat we know a good deal about the chalcolithic arts and crafts they were clearly expert coppersmiths and also skillful workers in stone tools weapons and bangles of copper have been unearthed they manufactured beads of semi precious stones such as carnelian stratite and uh, quartz crystal and the people knew the art of spinning and weaving because spindle walls have been discovered in malwa cotton flags and silk threads made of cotton silk and of uh, semal silk cotton tree have been found in maharashtra indicating an expertise in the manufacture of cloth in addition to the artisans who practiced these crafts at various sites enamagon had potters smiths ivory carvers lime makers and terracotta artisans regional differences in social structure cereals pottery etc become apparent in the copper stone phase eastern india produced rice western india cultivated barley and wheat chronologically certain settlements in malwa and central india such as those in kayata and eran were established early those of western maharashtra and eastern india at a much later date we are able to form some idea about the burial practices and religious cults of the, these people in maharashtra people buried their dead in urns beneath the floor of their house in the north to south position they did not use separate cemeteries for this purpose as was the case with the harappans pots and some copper objects were deposited in the graves obviously for the use of the dead in the next world terracotta figures of women suggest that the chalcolithic people venerated the mother goddess and some unbaked nude clay figurines were also used for worship a figure of the mother goddess similar to that found in western asia has been found in enamagon in malwa and rajasthan in western asia has been found in enamagon in malwa and rajasthan st- stylized bull terracotta shows that the bull was the symbol of a religious cult both the settlement pattern and burial practices suggest the beginnings of social inequalities in chalcolithic society a kind of settlement herchery is visible in several jhor settlements of maharashtra some of them are as large as 20 hectares but other encompass only 5 hectares and even less this would imply two tier habitation the difference in the size of settlement suggests the that the larger settlements dominate the smaller ones however in both the large and small settlements the chief and his uh, kins- kinsmen who lived in rectangular house dominated others who lived in round huts in enamagon the craftsmen lived on the western fringes and the chief probably at the center this suggests social distance between the inhabitants in the grey hut Chandoli and Nevasa in western Maharashtra some children were buried with copper based necklaces around their necks others had grave goods consisting only of pots at Enamagon an adult was buried with pottery and some copper in one house in Kayatham 29 copper bangles and two unique axes were found at the same place necklaces of semi precious stones such as Stitite and carnelian beads were found in pots it is evident that those who 
possessed these objects were affluent chronologically special note may be taken of his site at ganeshwar which is located close to the rich copper mines of the sikar jujhino area of the khetri copper belt in rajasthan the copper objects excavated from these are include arrow heads spare heads fish hooks cords bangles chisels etc some of their shapes are similar to those discovered at indus sites a terracotta cake resembling the indus type was also found there were also many microliths that are characteristics of the chalcolithic culture we also find the ocp orchard colored pottery which is a red slippered ware often painted in black and largely in vase forms as the ganeshwar deposits are ascribed to 2800 to 2200 bc they by and large predate the mature harappan culture ganeshwar principally supplied copper objects to harappa and did not receive much from it the ganeshwar people partly lived on agriculture and largely on hunting although their principal craft was the manufacture of copper objects they were unable to urbanize the ganeshwar assembly was neither urban nor a proper ocp copper hoard culture with its microliths and other stone tools much of the ganeshwar culture can be considered a pre harappan chalcolithic culture that contributed to the making of the mature harappan culture chronologically they there are several series of chalcolithic settlements in india some are pre harappan others are contemporaries with the harappan culture and yet others are post harappan pre harappan strata on some sites in the harappan zone are also called early harappan in order to distinguish them from the mature urban indus civilization this is the pre harappan phase at kalibangan in rajasthan and banwali in haryana is distinctly chalcolithic so two is the case with the corn dizi in sindh in pakistan pre harappan and post harappan chalcolithic cultures and those coexisting with the harappan have been found in northern western and central india an example is the kayatha culture 2000 to 1800 bc which existed towards the end of the harappan culture it has some pre harappan elements in pottery but also evidences harappan influence several post harappan chalcolithic cultures in these areas are influenced by the post urban phase of the harappan culture several other chalcolithic cultures to younger in age than the mature harappan culture are not connected with the indus civilization the malwa culture 1700 to 1200 bc found in navda to the iran and nagda is considered to be non harappan that is also the case with the jorv culture 1400 to 700 bc which encompasses the whole of maharashtra except parts of vidarbha and konkan in the southern and eastern parts of india chalcolithic settlements existed independently of the harappan culture in south india they are invariably found in continuation of the neolithic settlements the chalcolithic settlements of the vindhya region bihar and west bengal too are not related to harappan culture evidently various types of pre harappan chalcolithic cultures promoted the spread of farming communities in sin balochistan rajasthan and elsewhere and created conditions for the rise of the urban civilization of harappa mention may be made of amri and kodzi in sindh kalibangan and even ganeshwar in rajasthan it appears that some chalcolithic farming communities moved to the flood plains of the indus lent bronze technology and succeeded in setting up cities some work has been done on the chalcolithic sites in the mid gangatic valley where 138 sites have been located considering the area of the middle sorry mid gangatic valley this number is not large when we fig- find 854 neolithic sites in south india of 138 sites only 14 sites in up and bihar bihar have been excavated so far and they show little use of copper 
So the people largely lived on agriculture. Chalcolithic settlements seem to have been confined to the river junctions and upland areas near the hills. Sizable settlements do not figure in the purely plain areas until the coming of the Iron Age. The Chalcolithic sites of the mid Gangetic zone and those of West Bengal relate to 1500 to 700 BC or even later. Pandu Raza, Dibhi, and Mahishidhar are important sites in West Bengal. All these sites of the mid and lower Gangetic area use more stone tools and fewer copper ones, the latter being very sparse, though some fish hooks have been found. Charcolithic cultures in central and western India disappeared by 1200 BC or thereabout. Only the Jod culture continued until 700 BC. In several parts of India, the Charcolithic black and red were continued into historical times till the 2nd century BC. However, by end large, there was a gap of about 4 to 6 centuries between the end of the Chalcolithic cultures and the rise of the early historic cultures in central and western India. In western India and western MP, the eclipse of the Chalcolithic habitations is attributed to a decline in rainfall from about 1200 BC onwards, but in West Bengal and in the mid Gangetic zone, they continued for a long time. Probably in western India, the Chalcolithic people were unable to continue for long with a digging stick in the black cleared soil area that is difficult to break in the dry season in the red soil areas especially in eastern india however the chalcolithic phase was immediately followed without any gap by the iron phase which gradually transformed the people into full-fledged agriculturalists the same is true of the chalcolithic cultures of the mid gangetic plains similarly at several sites in southern india Chalcolithic cultures was transformed into the megalithic culture using iron. Importance of the Chalcolithic phase Barry in the alluvial plains and the thickly forested areas, traces of Chalcolithic cultures have been discovered almost all over India. In the alluvial plains of the mid Gangetic region, several Chalcolithic sites occur, particularly near a lake or a river confluence. During this phase, people mostly founded rural ba- settlements on river banks not far removed from the hills. As stated earlier, they used microliths and other stone tools supp- supplemented by some copper tools. It seemed that most of them knew the art of copper smelting. Almost all chalcolithic communities used wheel turned black and red pots. Considering their pre-bronze phase of development, we find that they were the first to use painted pottery. Their pots were meant for cooking, eating, drinking and storage. They used both the lota and thali. In South India, the Neolithic phase imperceptibly faded into the Chalcolithic and so these cultures are called Neolithic Chalcolithic. In other parts, especially in Western Maharashtra and Rajasthan, the Chalcolithic people seems to have been colonizers. Their earliest settlements were in Malwa and Central India, such as those in Kayata and Iran. Those in Western Maharashtra were established later, and those in Bihar and West Bengal much later. The Chalcolithic communities founded the first large villages in peninsular India and cultivated far more cereals than were known to the Neolithic communities. In particular, they cultivated barley, wheat and lentil in western India and rice in southern and eastern India. Their cereal food was supplemented by non-vegetarian food in western India. More animal food was consumed but fish and rice formed important elements elements in the diet of eastern India. More remains of structure have been found in western Maharashtra, western MP and southeastern Rajasthan. The settlements at Kayatha and Iran in MP and at Enamagon in western Maharashtra were fortified. On the other hand, the remains of structure in Chiran and Pandu Raja Dibi in eastern India were poor, indicating post holes and roundhouses. The burial practices were differ different. 
in maharashtra the dead body was placed in the north south position but in south india in the east west position you can remember this point the burial practices were different in maharashtra the dead body was placed in the north south position but in south india in the east west position there were virtually complete extended burial in western india but fractional burial in eastern india limitations of chalcolithic cultures the chalcolithic people domesticated cattle sheep goats which were the third in the courtyard in all probability the domesticated animals were slaughtered for food and not used for milk and dairy products the tribal people such as the gonds of bastar believe that milk is meant only to feed young animals and therefore they do not milk their cattle consequently the chalcolithic people were not able to make full use of the animals also the chalcolithic people living in the black cotton soil area of um, central and western india did not practice cultivation on any intensive or extensive scale neither hoy nor plug has been found at um, chalcolithic sites perforated stone discs alone were tied as wedges to the digging sticks which could be used in slash burn or jump cultivation it was possible to sow in the ashes with the aid of such a digging stick intensive and extensive cultivation on the black soil required the use of iron implements which rarely occurred in the chalcolithic culture the chalcolithic people living in the red soils areas of eastern india also faced the same difficulty the general weakness of chalcolithic culture is evident from the burial of a large number of children in western maharashtra despite the food producing economy the rate of infant mortality sorry mortality was very high this might be attributed to lack of nutrition absence of medical knowledge or outbreaks of epidemics in any event the chalcolithic social and economic pattern did not promote longevity uh i think uh, there is a small disturbance uh, according to the audio sorry for that i have continuing the chapter the copper stone culture had an essentially rural background during its the continuance the supply of copper was limited so we find copper mines in eastern india few copper tools have been found in the chalcolithic sites of bihar and the neighboring states some chalcolithic people primarily use their microliths or small stone tools by itself a tool made of a copper was a plant people were unaware of the art of mixing tin with copper and thus forging the much stronger and useful metal called bronze bronze tools facilitated the rise of the early civilization in crete egypt mesopotamia and also in the indus valley the people of the copper stone age could not write nor did they live in site cities as did those of the bronze age all these elements of civilization figure for the first time in the indus region of the indian subcontinent although more chalcolithic cultures existing in a major part of india were younger than the indus valley civilization they did not derive any substantial benefit from the advanced technological knowledge of the indus people the copper hoards and the orange colored pottery face over 80 copper hoards consisting of rings shields hatchets swords harpoons spearheads and human like figures have been found in a wide area ranging uh, ranging from west bengal and orissa in the east to gujarat and haryana in the west and from ap in the south to up in the north the largest hoard comes from gangheria in mp comprising 424 copper tools and weapons and one or two thin sheets of silver objects however the substantial number of copper hoards are concentrated in the ganga yamuna top in other areas we encounter stray finds of copper harpoons antenna swords and anthropomorphic anthropomorphic figures these artifacts served several purposes 
the verb meant not only for fishing hunting and fighting but also for artisanal and agricultural use they presuppose high technological skill and knowledge on the part of the coppersmith and cannot have been the handy work of primitive nomad artisans in excavations at two places in western up some of these objects have been discovered in association with orch colored pots and some mud structures at one place stray baked brick or fragments have also been found as have stone tools all this suggests that the people who used the implements of the copper hoards supplemented by some other tools let a settled life and were among the earliest chalcolithic agriculturists and artisans to settle in a substantial part of the dope many orchard color pottery sites have been found in the upper portion of the dope but stray copper hoards have been discovered in the plateau areas of jharkhand and other regions and many copper cells in the khetri zone of rajasthan the period covered by the orch colored pottery culture may roughly be placed at between 2500 bc on the basis of a series of eight scientific datings when the settlements of this culture disappeared the dope did not have much habitation until about 1000 bc we learn of some habitations by people using black and red ware but their habitational deposits are so thin and the antiquities are so poor in quality that we cannot form a distinct idea of their culture equipment in any case of the upper part of the dope settlement begins with the arrival of the orch colored pottery people jodhpur on the border of haryana and rajasthan evidences the thickest ocp deposit of 1.1 meter it appears however that at no place did these settlements last for over a century or so they were neither large nor spread over a wide territory why and how these settlements came to an end is not clear a suggestion has been made that in in antiquation followed by water logging in an extensive area may have been have made the area unfit for human settlements the presence of texture of the orch colored pottery is according to some scholars the result of its association with the water for a considerable period of time the ocp people may have been the junior con- contemporaries of the harappans and their area was not far removed from the that of the harappans we may therefore except some give and take between the ocp people and the bronze using harappans end of the chapter we have here hearing about chronology of this chapter busy 2800 to 2200 dates of ganeshwar deposits rajasthan 2100 to 1500 ahar chalkolithic culture banas valley rajasthan 2000 onwards a wide use of black and red ware 2000 to 1800 kayata chalkolithic culture rampi 2000 to 1500 orch colored pottery culture 1700 to 1200 malwa culture found in navdatholi iran and nagda mp 1500 chalcolithic bones bricks in gilin rajasthan 1400 to 700 jor culture maharashtra 1200 many chalcolithic sites in central and eastern india 1200 onwards the eclipses of the chalcolithic habitations in western india till second century continuity of chalcolithic black and red ware thank you